Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, uh, this is uh, the subject of my talk. It's uh, a little bit uh, overblown, maybe, but you will see what I have in mind. It's going to be just a short, uh, short discussion. So uh, we're talking about uh, speech recognition, and uh, this is the famous uh, diagram, uh, noisy channel formulation of uh, speech recognition. Uh, do we have a pointer or so? Or? Yeah. Does this yeah. one? Okay, well, so we take the view that this is a human being and uh, uh, he has a mind and he wants to say certain words and through his production uh, he really gets, gets these words out and there's a signal here and it's fed into some acoustic processor which, uh, uh, signal processor which uh, does various processing of the signal and finally there is a decoder that tries to estimate uh, what he had in mind to say. And uh, there is a famous formula which says that when you formulate uh, uh, the, the problem in this way, then uh, the linguistic decoder tries to decide uh, on what was said by uh, manipulating, by finding the maximum, the W which maximizes this probability. A is uh, the signal that is fed into the linguistic decoder. And uh, 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 using Bayes' theorem, you then uh, transform this probability, this uh, formula into this formula. And there are two components of this formula. There is something called an acoustic model, which says uh, uh, statistically uh, how a, uh, a word or a sequence of words will be pronounced. And then there is an a priori probability uh, of uh, the speaker wishing to uh, pronounce this. Work. And this talk is concerned about language modeling, namely how to estimate these probabilities of various sequences. So now let's see if this works. Yes. And so the language modeling is, uh, is a problem of, uh, uh, of assigning, uh, of estimating uh, the probability of the word string. And of course, by base formula, that probability is a product of these probabilities of generating the i's word, given that you know previous words. And uh, this is not handleable because there are too many parameters here. So uh, what one really has to do is to put the past. This is prediction of the next word, given the past words that were pronounced. Uh, or, uh, and uh, uh, we have to put, uh, uh, reduce the parameter space by putting these words into some equivalence class. And so uh, uh, the art of language modeling, in some sense, is the selection of what the equivalence classification of the past ought to be, and also how to estimate this probability. And in all commercial systems and uh, most systems that uh, compete with, uh, for the quality of uh, speech recognition, uh, this probability is uh, modeled by a n-gram language model, namely uh, this equivalence class is the same provided the last n different words are, uh, uh, are the same as anywhere else. What I'm trying to say is that we don't look at the infinite past, we just look at the past that is, uh, that is uh, uh, n minus one words long. And this is of course uh, regarded by the whole world and everybody as primitive, and people would think, would hope that uh, uh, this uh, probability could be replaced by something more, shall we say, subtle and, uh, and uh, interesting, and so uh, many alternatives of this uh, classification have been proposed and tried. For instance, that uh, this prediction of the next word would be based on some grammatical analysis of the past, or that it would be based on some neural networks, uh, this probability, or there is, there is a new technique uh, which is called random forest 
and where in fact this probability is, is estimated in some other way which I will not get into. But these are the three main tra uh, trends uh, to do it, but unfortunately these trends uh, improve language modeling a little bit, but not sufficiently. The n-gram model is very flexible, and uh, so when you do it like this, uh, if somebody gives you billions uh, of words of text, you can re-estimate uh, re, um, uh, this probability, and if somebody gives you even more words of text, you can again re-estimate this probability while uh, giving you these more words, for instance, on the internet, on the, on the World Wide Web, etc., to re-estimate the grammar or to re-estimate the neural web uh, uh, network, so the random forest uh, is a big deal. And uh, in fact, uh, can't be handled uh, mathematically for practical reasons. So uh, I just said this, namely that the alternative language models are much more difficult uh, to base on large amounts of data which are now uh, available to us because of uh, the internet. And, uh, uh, and the alternative methods are better than the NDM language model, but only where they can be really performed, where they can be really estimated. That means for moderate amounts of text, not for enormous amount of text. So the question is, uh, should we forget uh, about trying to estimate a better language model, and should we simply give up and uh, 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 have angry language models be satisfied with them and be glad that they are so simple to, uh, to implement in principle? And so, uh, uh, and the second question is, if better language models were possible, that means uh, they would really be better, not just marginally better, like the alternatives that we tried are, uh, what would be their characteristics? What features would they depend on? And uh, so now I go back to something that's been uh, done uh, in 1950s by a famous information theorist, uh, uh, Claude Shannon, and Claude Shannon uh, in a famous paper tried to estimate uh, what is the information content of the English language per word. In other words, as, as you generate the next word and next word, what is the mutual information between the past and the new word? And uh, he estimated, oops, and he estimated that uh, essentially uh, the uh, information content is one bit per letter of the words that are being produced. And uh, what, what we mean, uh, so that's a very low information content, right? Because uh, the number of letters is, let's say, 26 in the English alphabet, so the information content is everything was equally probable would be the logarithm of 26, and that's considerably bigger than 1. So uh, this was a surprising result, but there were some objections to it because this estimate was not based on enough data and on enough variety of text. But in any case, the way this estimate was done is by uh, by having an underlying philosophy, and that philosophy was that you're going to make the estimate by uh, measuring the performance of human beings uh, 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 or trying to guess what the next word is. All right, and the idea was that uh, native speakers of the language uh, have the best that a language model could have could have because they are capable of, uh, of English and they've been born with it, etc. So uh, that's how the estimate was okay. So uh, uh, we would like to uh, look at what the capacity of an ideal language model would be. That means what we would like is to see how much better the performance of uh, a speech organizer would be if the language model wasn't the NGM language model, but was, uh, 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 but was based on, on human performance. In other words, humans would try to estimate, uh, give, give the probability or somehow uh, affect the choice of the next word, given that the, uh, the language, uh, given that the 
uh, uh, that the, uh, that the uh, speech organizer would be a state of the art speech organizer would do the best possible, currently best possible acoustic processing and then the prediction, uh, the P of W would be given essentially by guessing uh, by the humans. And the idea is, now of course, uh, uh, the vocabulary of, uh, uh, of humans or of a speech erudition uh, is in the thousands or tens of thousands of words. So uh, if, the, if people were really wanting to perform the, the work of the language model, they would have to be able to somehow guess and assign probabilities to, let's say, 60, to the possibility of any one of the 60,000 words. And then humans are clearly not capable of doing it. So what we do instead, what we decided to try to do instead is to, uh, to create something that in speech audition is called a confusion network. And the confusion network sort of uh, narrows the possibilities to the words which conceivably could have been said, uh, given the uh, uh, state of the art recognizer. So for instance, uh, I don't know what the right word is, uh, what the right sequence is, but uh, this is an example of a confusion. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is an example of a confusion network. The first word is either, let's say, head, headed or head, and another word is either n or it, and either it is large and large or in and this. And uh, the way we would introduce the human beings uh, to be uh, active in the selection is that the human beings would try to find the most likely path uh, through, uh, through this network. So we have, uh, so we have, uh, uh, I'm going to give you a demonstration of this, and, uh, but it's clear that to get statistically valid results, uh, we must uh, 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 be able to resolve or find the path through a lot of uh, confusion networks, and once we do that, we would of course like to somehow extract what questions did the human performers ask themselves when they made their decisions. And then presumably knowing what it is, what information their guesses were uh, based on, presumably uh, uh, construct a new kind of language model that would be based on the same web, uh, types of questions. So, then, so, so this endeavor, this new Shannon game, would have uh, two aims. One of them to see how much uh, the improvement of the, uh, the speech organizer would be if the language model quo was ideal. And secondly, uh, uh, what is an ideal language model? What does it take into consideration? I'm a little bit, uh, uh, I, I, I want to skip this. And give you a uh, give you an example uh, of okay. So uh, I think it is uh, uh, here is an example, and you can play this game yourselves. Uh, it's capped uh, alternative. Ah, uh, here we are. So this is what the humans would be fed. Here is an example of a sentence uh, from, uh, I don't know if you hear me, uh, from a database called Broadcast News. And uh, uh, you see uh, our recognizers are pretty good. In other words, in most cases, in fact, they decide quite firmly on what the words are. And then occasionally, there are uh, possibilities uh, to be selected by the human being. And the human being would select these possibilities. So uh, you can see here, uh, for instance, it's possible to increase the font size. I don't know how to increase the font size. Not from reading. I'm trying to get the whole sentence on the board. <laughs> uh, if I did it, uh, uh, I, I will read it for you. But uh, if I did it uh, uh, line by line, you would forget what the previous line is. <laughs> He, he, he's trying. He's trying to increase the font size. All right. Not so much. Just another one. Just 
Okay. So you understand that what I want to do is I want to uh, uh, I want to make a choice between the alternatives that are uh, that are drawn here. And uh, uh, first of all, I might be interested in knowing what the best foregram language model that we have, how the, that foregram language model would choose. And that would be done by me clicking on the foregram. And that would be the choice of the uh, language model, uh, of the best language model that we have. This is the IBM language model uh, that you know, that, that is certainly co competitive and state of the art. And you see that the sentence would be, in northern Philadelphia, an electrical fire forced the evacuation of several stores here this afternoon, a faulty over the Bustleton Village shopping center, etc. Well, okay. Um, you can see that somewhere uh, the, uh, the, the choice of the language model uh, is correct. But uh, uh, surely this over the Bustleton village is not correct. So a human being such as me uh, would sit down here and would try to see, uh, OK. OK, in East Philadelphia, an electrical fire forced the evacuation of several stores here this afternoon. Uh, chapter 6. Uh, over uh, the uh, Bustleton Village shopping center just after 3 p.m. Uh, uh, period. Uh, faulty underground cable was the apparent cause of the problem. The situation was under control and and I don't know. In uh, in about uh, an hour. An hour. So this is what you would do. For instance, I mean, you would, I mean, the, the, the player would do this, and then he would submit his guess, and the guess says that I got 19 out of 19 possibilities correctly, and we'll try another sentence or two to see, uh, of course, I will make mistakes. And uh, it will then show what, uh, to the user what the correct uh, uh, choice would have been. So here is next. And here is another sentence. And it is uh, uh, perhaps, again, this is what my program would like. I think he more used coming, etc. and. Uh, I would choose all right. Thank you, Cecily. Uh, more news coming up on this early edition of Action News. Stick around. We will be back. And uh, I, I, I've, of course, seen these sentences. So it's quite possible. Oh, I have to, I have to go back again. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. Uh, Cecil is obviously the, the reporter. Action News. Stick around. We will be back. We'll submit it. And again, my choice was perfect. I have to make some mistakes. So here I'll make some mistakes. And, well, uh, for instance, the Nathaniel Jones case. And the Nathaniel Jones case. So they are going to be talking about some Nathaniel Jones case. Uh, uh, how was a city wrecked by racial tension in the past dealing with this case? Uh, we'll go live to Cincinnati to find out. Just to show you how uh, I think this is probably uh, a correct result. Uh, and, uh, but you could have the choices made by the engram. And then, if you were satisfied with it, you could submit it. And uh, it would say that uh, it scored correctly five choices out of six. And the problem here was that uh, 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 the, the, the selector should have chosen a uh, and uh, uh, 
but I, that's the end. Now, you, <coughs> uh, I have, of course, selected these sentences, but you can play the game. <coughs> it turns out that whenever you sign on to this uh, game, uh, uh, the first five sentences are always the same to help me in this, per, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, presentation, but uh, the, the further sentences are completely random. And so if you sign on and if somebody else signs on, then uh, uh, they will get di different sentences and we will uh, be able to observe how well you do it. Uh, I, I don't know how to go back actually uh, in this presentation. Uh, uh, in order to get a lot of, uh, 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 in order, and now let's see. Uh, this is, <coughs> uh, this says something against uh, possible, uh, uh, how the game could be played so we would get a lot of uh, uh, data out of this. One of the major problems, of course, is that in order to do what I've done here, you would have to have a transcription which would give you the truth. Well, uh, we plan to have millions of sentences uh, uh, tested like that. And uh, even though the World Wide Web has a lot of speech in it, uh, we don't have a lot of transcriptions, and transcriptions are very difficult to make. I mean, cost. So uh, uh, one possibility is to uh, score against two transcriptions, or that the game would be played by pairs of people, uh, uh, or that a person would have to transcribe a sentence first before he would be given some other sentence, so he would pay some dues on this. We have to figure out how to get at the truth without the cost of investment of the, uh, uh, of, uh, of the transcription. And we have all sorts of ideas about it. And the idea, of course, is, as I say, that once we have this game played, uh, we will collect statistics and we will try to see what kind of parameters the, uh, the human being used uh, uh, to uh, resolve the doubts that uh, the current fusion networks have. That's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Brinek, for the stimulating talk and your questions. Um, why don't you use books on tape? Well, uh, uh, how, how would that? Uh, I think there's not enough of it. We could use books on tape. In other words, we, you mean we would we would send the books on tape uh, through the recognizer and uh, we would get these confusions? Yeah, I I don't know how many. Uh, I think to have a statistically valid uh, uh, valid uh, uh, result, we we need much more. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. If I were to uh, predict a word from the past, then I would be, as a human, I would be inclined to uh, use a lot of semantic yes. things. And so obviously they are not in the in the end uh, ground. Yes. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about how to narrow the gap between an ignorant approach and a not so ignorant approach? Well, I have no idea to tell you the truth. I mean, uh, the next speaker, uh, Jerry Hobbs, will tell us how to find the content of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, sentences or of, uh, of discourse. And as soon as he succeeds, we will know uh, how to apply. There is no doubt that the decisions I've made uh, in the example I've given you were based on both familiarity with the, what the meaning of the sentence is and secondly on certain uh, mannerisms uh, that I'm aware of of the uh, reporters uh, who report over CNN. Any other question? Ben, you had a question. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask the, well, first of all, it's very interesting to thank you. Um, but the question I had was the model that you presented at the beginning assumes a probability distribution over possible logic. That's right. Um, but your annotation will just give you the single most probable logic. Right. What the user is going to give you is the single most. Yes, he will, and if he makes a mistake, we will not take uh, uh, that into account. 
I mean, if we have a transcription, then of course we will know whether you made a mistake or not. Sure. Okay. So, so I was wondering, because you could easily have the case where you have an, an utterance which on its own is quite probable, but it doesn't match the acoustic. So okay. I was wondering if you had any ideas as to how to take um, the user's responses and estimate a distribution of the utterances rather than just the single most probable. We're just at the beginning of this, and I don't have an idea how to do it. And uh, we, will uh, we will try very hard uh, this semester. Uh, I will be in Prague, in fact, and uh, uh -huh. when this, uh, the main student who is going to be concerned with it is going to be in Prague with me, <laughs> and we'll uh, talk a lot over coffee, beer, etc., and hopefully we'll make some progress. Okay. Some more questions? We still have some time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the standard statistical language models normally see the past, right? Yes. So uh, in your game, basically, the, 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 the player sees everything. Have yes. you foreseen a variant of this game where basically just the past would be visible? No, no. I mean, uh, uh, the, the fact that the base theorem resolves the probability of a string by uh, looking at the next word, the next word, etc., is just a convenience. There are all sorts of ways in which to uh, in which to formulate the probability of a string. So we will take we will allow uh, uh, taking into account uh, the future, uh, except that of course we will try to uh, make sure that we formulate it correctly uh, from a uh, probabilistic point of view. And maybe one of the questions you should ask your players is how much future, uh, how much information from the future. Did you use uh, for Yes, yes, training? of course, of course. But uh, how to ask such a question, you know, who is willing to give you some long discourse? So we have to figure out some ingenious ways in which we will extract this information out of players without them actually knowing that they are being, <laughs> that they are being used in this way. Perhaps there are two variants of the game. One where the person can only see the next word and has to choose one of a possible next set of words, well, and another like you showed. Well, one of our thoughts is that people would, would work uh, as partners, and that uh, one of the partners uh, would see, would both hear the sentence and know uh, what its transcription was, or he makes the transcription himself, and he would, uh, in sequence, uh, release information uh, to, the uh, uh, to the other player who's guessing, and this way we would have a controlled way to decide what information was available to the person when he chose. So it's a question of human factors, whether we can get people to play it and, uh, and uh, uh, in such a way that we can extract information. Just a little bit. We have billions of words of text from which you can build a language on. Yes. Is it thought that the, that speech uh, text is so different that you, you were saying you don't have enough text, but there, we have billions of words, but it's not exactly right. Uh, Luis, we have billions of words of text, right. and we have billions of words of speech, and we want to see uh, uh, what help the speech organizer needs. And so we want to measure it not by simply taking statistics of the text, but by, by uh, you and I had a discussion about discriminative language models yesterday, actually, and we want to do it in a discriminative way. In other words, we want the language model to stress things when it is in difficulty, when the recognizer is in difficulty. Oh. Uh, Elmar. Elmar. Yeah. With, with the kind of uh, stuff you're looking at, you will always have the problem of new names, you know? Yes, yes. Nobody knew Palin before she said, I'm going to run. Right. Um, now, you have to make sure that the recognizer has it in, and you have to make sure that the human being is aware of these current events, especially when in the news they're going to talk about some very, uh, some country that people probably, you know, didn't hear before and stuff. How are you going to do that? I have no idea. I, I, you, you understand me now, in the last half a year, we made an effort to create this interface. 
and we are just experimenting with it. And I expect that it's going to take a long time. And, uh, and of course, we are aware of the problem you're bringing and uh, of the fact that there are locutions which are being used. And we'll have to handle it in some way. No, 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 no. The, uh, the isolated sentences of the, uh, are only for this demonstration. Uh, 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 clearly, uh, the, uh, the people who sign on as players will be getting the whole document. I mean, one thing after another. Okay, so you have. have we will allow them the all. Right, right. And, uh, and we might give, give them the beginning uh, correctly transcribed and start them from a certain point on. Maybe this is it. Okay, well, if any one of you has any ideas, uh, uh, I would be glad. I, I'll be here for the next three days anyway, and I will be happy to hear from your ideas. And, uh, uh, and otherwise, you can talk to me and ask me, and thank you very much for your attention.